the Lord bless you in Jesus name the week beginning becomes for you a week of miracles signs and wonders in the name of Jesus everything you lay your hands to do will prosper the Lord will lift you above your enemies you will see his faithfulness at work in your life I call your week blessed in Jesus name we pray every time I pray for the miracle service I don't pray for too many things I don't pray God heal the sick cast out devils no that's not my prayer Lord let there be something sign a signature upon someone's life upon someone's family you know I was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon and while we're talking about this my sister was speaking and said that um, that it looks like this miracle service God is visiting families not just individuals he just wants to move past individuals remember I told you you are not free when your family is not free let me tell you sincerely he said as for me and my house if the jo the brothers of Joseph all had dreams nobody would kill anybody it was because only one over how many had dreams and the rest say you are joking you saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bow but when everybody rises by the finger of God then it is a testimony I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family but give God a few minutes tonight to answer them God has an answer my brothers and my sisters you will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before come with your vessels increased and enlarged Lord I know you are stepping in I know you are changing my life it's June but people have laughed at me where is the extraordinary fruitfulness I'm still begging I don't even have 250,000 to pay rent my prayer life has gone down ha! this God of heaven my brothers and my sisters it doesn't take time when God opens his mouth from heaven anything plus anything plus God is the answer he said should be your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be I continue to pray and I say Lord let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders but a sign and a wonder itself if you are looking for a salmon and you don't have data just think about koinonia and there is salmon is you are you are seeing a marvelous god listen by the grace of god within the time god has given us we will we will disprove the pride of men in this world all of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor God has sent us to disprove them that whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week There is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men. Please don't get used to the natural cause of things. There is an advantage. God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. That people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week. Because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there is no message. No, you are not a sign and a wonder. You have what it takes to do signs and wonders. But God wants you to be the sign yourself. To be like that star that shines in the east. That when men look at you, they say, what manner of God is this? Men whom the earth was not worthy of. See, there is nothing the devil can do about this. No. There is a kind of speed that God can bring to your life. Regardless of who loves you or who does not love you, it doesn't play any role. God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement. Let me tell you, fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement. You will look for their downfall wasting your time. They will just continue to rise. Held by the jealousy of God himself. Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world. Where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and pocket your destiny. No. I'm speaking of fear and unbelief from you. So that when we begin to minister, you don't just stand. Some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far. My brothers and sisters, what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that He's mighty? Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it. Because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Huh. When Jesus came, he said, You say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything and turn a man's life around. Hallelujah. Someone gave me a very humorous testimony. I think it was yesterday. They had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad. And, um, uh, you know, I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something. And they had just deprived that man for five years. I think if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, no salary, no benefits because some ammunitions were missing and they traced to him. Imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years. Things went down. And you know if, if he wins the case, they will have to restore everything plus damages. 
Are we together? And they kept manipulating, manipulating. And I think just yesterday I was told that, was it yesterday or I think this week, the verdict came out and came out in the Father's favor. I said, you who should start dancing in your house. Because whether the devil likes it or not, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that said a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true and let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die. Worry. Pastors collapse on stage. I've told you that there is a technology that sends Israel to Egypt. It's called hunger. Every time there is hunger, Israel must go to Egypt to find bread. Genesis 42. Please give it to us. Let's just read it. I apologize. The projection is not very clear, but just see that scripture. Now, everyone read. If you can see it, we're reading 1 and 2. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet, but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to, including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another pharaoh that knew not Joseph. 
and the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, godliness. Life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with viral. And the price is double. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And the child said, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed. And, you know, I got angry in my spirit. I said, this is the kind of news Satan wants. Because, you see, very soon, the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives. You will lose your voice, lose your relevance, lose your integrity on the platter of hunger. Was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman and when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. Oh. I said, I said, do you? <laughs> And open an X-ray, an X-ray place. I mean, I was not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bill, I said for X-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting fifty thousand naira, and you use thirty thousand for X-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? 
anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night God is determined to rise up. And not only step in. But turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10 please. He says the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say who is that? He says the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. He will call the police immediately. And say there is a thief, there is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is preaching here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction. is a signature. The thief, Satan. He comes into a joyful family. Are we together? Happy husband, come my dear. Happy wife. When the thief comes in between them, he must scatter everything. One flimsy excuse or the other. He will come in between business partners and shred them. When Satan passes a place, you know this is him. He will leave his signature. Stealing, killing, destruction. We would be in trouble if Jesus stopped there. But he says, I am come. He didn't say, I have come. I am has come. To bring life and that you have that life more abundantly, lavishly. I am come that he may have life. I am come that he may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter 1. From verse 2, please. Grace and peace, verse 2, be multiplied unto you as through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given us. So what gives us in this kingdom? His divine power. Never forget this. It is not faith. Faith is the channel that allows his divine power to pass. The agency, the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is His divine power. For many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing. There is no argument there. Are we together? Faith is the pipe that the power of God flows to, to carry supernatural solutions to you. If there is no faith, there is no channel of the power. From the throne room to your situation, it will not be possible. You don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by His divine power. Now let me teach you this. I've taught you again. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind, the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. 
the testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say, give me the privilege of blessing you. Nobody is really stingy. The problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed. The earth is a realm of execution. The same way your body is. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, oh, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. And then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. When Noah was ready to open the ark, when he opened the ark, there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves. The Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them. Animals with no higher intelligence, they found their way to the ark. If animals can find their way to the ark, why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you? Why should breakthrough find it difficult to... Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk. You rest only when the grace walks. Let me tell you, life is hard when you are walking on your own. In this kingdom, we don't walk with our hands. Our hands only help us to receive the grace. When it comes, you enter your Sabbath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of God is the spiritual mechanism responsible. The signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now, the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs, they will happen according as His divine power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The information is not that He was anointed. Look at the extent to which He was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power, it says He went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There are people inside. There are people outside. There are people standing in such sacrifice, waiting for God. It will be very wicked to share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and tell everybody bye-bye. Return back with your challenge. No. I want you to believe God tonight. 
and insist lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for god to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that god gave man is a fundamental right it's not for christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you choose life i set before you prosperity and poverty i set before you success and failure i set before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose i choose life oh and everything that comes with it i choose speed i choose increase i choose honor i choose dignity i choose open doors i choose open heavens it's a choice and if you are a family man here as for you and your house you can choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house that the favor of god can rest upon your life tonight and that within the next one month things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you if you do not believe these things exist you are not a christian a christian is not just one who is born again a christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life Hallelujah. I like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace. So that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question. And they said, why couldn't we do this? He said, this kind. There is a technology for taking this one out. See, let me tell you sincerely, there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes. There is enough grace to turn the tables around. The anointing works like money. I've taught you, it can only solve the problems that are lower than it. The anointing does not generically solve every problem. No. No. You have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal 5-10 minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it not every grace solves every problem if every grace solves every problem then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the holy ghost Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the holy ghost again to what end It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs, and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace. 
requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on a dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of grace. Are we together now?